What's up guys and welcome to episode 4 of this series on fruit. But first of all, before I dive into it, a mighty big up to everyone who commented on the previous video. As promised, we're going to give everyone who commented on the previous video access to meal planning to get them lean, strong and healthy. So for everyone who commented, we'll be sending you an email for further details. Alright, so at the end of the previous video, I mentioned that we shall be diving into the benefits and dangers of fructose. However, because of quite a bit of feedback which we've been getting from you guys, people want to actually know, okay, fine, so fructose has problems, has dangers, but are there any fruits which you can eat which are healthy? So I thought that we'll tackle that first, and then next week we'll talk about some of those dangers of fructose. So as we learned in the previous episode, if you have a choice, always choose vegetables over fruit. Why? Because vegetables tend to be lower in fructose and glucose and tend to be higher in fiber. That's one. And two, also because vegetables are not really associated with any cancers. We discovered that intake of excess fruit was associated with an increase in the incidence of thyroid cancer. However, I wouldn't tag on the fact that excess consumption of fruit causes an increased incidence of cancer as a reason for telling people to reduce on their fruit intake. My major concern with the fruit is the metabolic issues that can arise due to excess consumption of fruit. And as I mentioned, those are an increased incidence of things like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, gout, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and much more. So, whenever possible, choose vegetables. However, if one is to choose fruit, what are the factors that one should consider? So whenever I'm talking about food, I always like to look at quality and then quantity. So quality first. In terms of carbohydrate, under which fruit falls, I would like to consider the carbohydrate to fiber ratio. Someone may ask, what the heck is that? Don't worry, I shall explain it. So let's consider a sweet potato for example. It's rich in carbohydrate. Part of that carbohydrate is actually fiber, whereas the other part of it is sugar. So I want to know what is the ratio of the total carbohydrate within the sweet potato to the fiber within it. And that figure is a good predictor as to whether that source of carbohydrate is a healthy one or not so healthy. For those of you who have followed the channel for quite a while, you'll notice that I talk a lot about insulin resistance. Insulin is the hormone that our pancreas, an organ in the body, produces to reduce the amount of sugar in blood. How does it do that? It stimulates tissues in our body, especially the skeletal muscle, to take up that sugar for storage and energy, and as a result, reduce on our blood sugar. Foods which have a high carbohydrate to fiber ratio, hence relatively more sugar than fiber, are quickly absorbed from our small intestines into the blood and hence are going to cause our pancreas to produce large amounts of insulin, what we call insulin spikes. High amounts of insulin released into the blood are going to cause rapid reduction in blood sugar. Hence the popular phenomenon experienced especially by children who eat lots of sweet things, the sugar rush and then the crash soon after that. Also, repeated spiking of insulin over time, weeks, months, years, is going to cause one's tissues and cells to become insulin resistant. Insulin resistance is going to cause type 2 diabetes, obesity, and many other metabolic conditions on the long term. So one may ask, how can I know what the carbohydrate fiber ratio of a particular food is? Well, for processed foods in the supermarket, it's quite easy. All you need to do is look at the food label on the packaging of the food. A food label looks something like this. It will show the various nutrients in the food, both macros. Sometimes it also shows the micronutrients, but I like to focus on the macros, so fat, carbohydrate, and protein. So you'll see the serving size in grams or measured in terms of maybe a cup. You also see the amount of calories that that serving size has. Then you go on and see the amount of fat which it has. You'll see the amount of protein which it has. And then I'd like to focus on the carbohydrate. If you notice under carbohydrate, you'll see of that carbohydrate, how much is fiber and then how much is sugar. So if you want to know the carbohydrate to fiber ratio, it's very simple. Just divide the grams of carbohydrate by the grams of fiber, as simple as that. Typically for optimal health, we are targeting a carbohydrate to fiber ratio of less than five. Foods which have a carbohydrate ratio of less than five are typically not going to cause insulin spikes and hence keep you insulin sensitive, which is a good thing. Also, foods which have a low carbohydrate to fiber ratio are going to keep one satisfied for longer periods of time. It will protect you from the sugar crashes, which we talked about. So you definitely want to stick to foods which have a low carbohydrate to fiber ratio. One may ask, but most of the food we have doesn't really have food labels. Don't worry, I'll help you with that. Just check out this table. All right, so as you can see, we have a list of fruits and I've saved you the hassle by calculating the carbohydrate to fiber ratio of these fruits. Taking into account our diverse viewers and subscribers, both local and international. 
Okay, so as you can see, there's quite a number of fruits which have a captive fiber ratio of five or less. So we can look at cactus fruit, we can look at raspberry, we can look at guavas, lemon, if you're eating it whole, we can look at strawberry, kiwi fruit, pears, sweet soap. I think in Uganda we call it echitaferi. My Uganda is horrendous. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> uh, we can look at apricots, apples, oranges, blueberries. So quickly you'll notice that fruit which is resident to countries like uh, America or the European countries tends to be healthier. Unfortunately for us here in Uganda, that actually tends to be quite more expensive. But that's, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. So moving on to what I'd consider a fair group, that's a capped fiber ratio of 6 to about 8. You'll see their fruits like popo, and then beyond that, as you can see, you have your bananas, you have your dates, pineapples, mangoes, jackfruit, watermelon, grape, and raisins. It typically follows that as you move from fruits which have a low carbohydrate ratio to those which have a higher carbohydrate ratio, you should be eating smaller and smaller quantities of the fruit, as those which have a low carbohydrate fiber ratio are quite rich in sugar. Question of the day, which kinds of fruits have you been eating? Let us know in the comment section below. Remember, if you'd like tailored assistance on the quantities of food that suit you, check out the description section below for our contacts. Get in touch with us and we'll be glad to help you. Also, like the video and subscribe bottom right hand corner so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Remember, the playlist for the fruit series is right here. If you haven't delved into it, dive in right now. All right, till next week, take care and peace.